be with you. Today's gospel lesson is the story of the disciples right after Jesus fed the 5,000, which was our story last week. He sent the disciples across the Sea of Galilee without him. A storm came up. Jesus walked out to uh, the boat. Peter saw him, asked if he could walk on water, and of course, Peter sank. And we'll see what that means for us. It's nice to see you all here. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Please rise. <coughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. In the presence of God, who sees our hearts and our minds, let us confess our sin. God, our strength, we confess that we are captive to the power of sin that dwells within us. We put ourselves first and others last. What we think will make us happy leaves us longing for more. Even when we want to do what is good, we find ourselves doing the opposite. Rescue us from death's grip on our lives and raise us up day by day that we may be alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Sisters and brothers, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we are justified by God's grace as a gift. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, in whom we have forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The first reading is from verse Kings, chapter 19. At Horeb, the mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Heziel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of abel Melola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hezael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Is 
listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. reading from Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend to heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he, came frightened. he became frightened, and, be- and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. 
You may be seated. I would like to invite the young people to come forward. I think we have a special treat. Yes, we do. <laughs> We're going to see a PowerPoint, so we can all sit on the pew right up in the front. Well, I guess, you know what? Genevieve, we're going to change pews. I should make you all come and sit next to me, but that's, a, that's too much to expect. Okay, this is the story I just read to the grown-ups. I'll make room. Hi, Carter. Okay. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, he fed 5,000 men plus women and children, so it could have been 10, 12, 15,000. He told the disciples to get in the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. Then he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. By evening, the boat had sailed a great distance from the land, a few miles. As the disciples sailed toward the other side, the wind began to blow and the sea became rough. The sea became so rough that some of the disciples were becoming seasick. Have you ever been seasick? Me neither. They looked out at the sea and guess what they saw? They saw Jesus walking toward them on the water. When they saw him, they were terrified and cried out in fear. It is a ghost, they thought. Don't be afraid, Jesus said. It is I. Lord, then Peter said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. So Peter got out of the boat and began walking on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the waves, he was afraid. And he began to sink. And he cried out, Help! Save me! Immediately Jesus reached out and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they had climbed back into the boat, the sea became calm. And now the next slide is one I put in there because I think they missed the main point. And they worshiped. Well, you can see I did it because I have a typo. And they worshiped Jesus, their source of strength. We face many storms in our daily life. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, we can weather the storm. So they, the, the disciples realized Jesus was their source of strength in that terrible storm. Peter realized Jesus was his source of strength because Jesus saved him. And we too, when we have storms in our lives, I know some of you have, every once in a while, have a problem in your life. Anybody... Any of you cry once in a while? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some of you might cry a lot. But when we face those storms, when we keep our eyes on Jesus, we can weather the storm. Okay? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we do love you. Help us to keep our eyes on Jesus, our source of strength. In his name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats.
It's not supposed to happen, but my transmitter. Pal. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Carl Rayner, the theologian, once wrote that the time is fast approaching when he felt there were going to be two kinds of people. Either they're going to be agnostic or a believer, it would be either a mystic or an unbeliever. A mystic. Of course, a mystic is one who has an otherworldly view of life that it doesn't matter what's going on in this life, it's what's important is one's life of faith. So I said, people will either be mystics or unbelievers. And we sort of have that. Uh, um, Others have looked at this and seen our world as not a world of faith anymore. Uh, even 25 years ago, 30 years ago, um, it was pointed out by Henry Nouwen, he even saw sort of an agnostic view of life among seminary students when he taught in seminaries. We cannot uh, accept the fact that we're going to have a community of faith or, or a culture of faith that supports us all the time and supports a faithful view of life. An example of that is um, Ann Coulter's comments this past week when she was looked at the missionaries that had contracted Ebola in Western Africa, medical missionaries. Anybody hear what her response was? Now, Ann Coulter is a conservative columnist and always tries to stir the water, so I don't know if she believes what she says or not, but she's a person of faith. And her response was, why were these missionaries working in the cesspools, she said, the cesspools of Africa? where they could contract these terrible diseases. She went on to suggest that Dr. Brantley, one of the doctors that had contracted Ebola, if he had practiced at Cedars Sinai Hospital in Los Angeles and turned one single Hollywood power broker to Christ, he would have done more good for the entire world than anything he could accomplish in a century spent in Liberia. Well, God sends us out into the mission field. Sends us. How many people would know about Jesus had they not been sent? I like what um, John Piper, who was a pastor in Minneapolis, a mega church pastor, he wrote a limerick. Uh, and in fact, it was probably also pointed at um, Donald Tr Trump, who said that the missionaries should have never come home, never should have come back. He wrote this limerick. Why bring them home? Though you be stumped, this grace will not be trumped. I, I thought that was clever, by the way. So, agnostic. So, what, 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 is, what is the point of our gospel text today? We'll let Terry ch change the slides. Our, we see that in the story that Jesus sends the crowds off after he's fed them, finally can have some time alone to think about the death of his cousin, John the Baptist, goes up to the mountains to pray. The disciples get into trouble crossing the Sea of Galilee. 
Jesus comes to them walking on the water. They're afraid. They think they've seen a ghost. Jesus says three words. Fear not. I am. Uh, we could also uh, look at it as take courage. I am. Fear not. Now, th that would not be a bad motto for any Christian or any Christian church. Jesus says, take courage. I am. Fear not. Now, I know in our English Bibles, they've tried to clean up the grammar and say that Jesus really said, it is I. But ego of me is all that is in the Greek. I am. The disciples would have heard that as Jesus, reflecting back in the Old Testament, the word for God, Almighty God, Yahweh, in the Old Testament was I am. Take courage. I am. Fear not. Peter says, Lord, Lord, if it is you, let me come out to you. Now, it might be a good time to interject in here that we were not intended to walk on water. Now, I realize a few years ago, John Ortberg, an author I've had you read one of his books, wrote a book called If You Want to Walk on Water, You Have to Get Out of the Boat. And that's often the interpretation we have of this text. If you want to do something of faith, get out of the boat. Get yourself up and get going. Come on. Now, it makes a good motivational speech, and I shouldn't pick on John Ortberg because he's got a congregation of 50,000 people. But I think that misses the point. It makes the focus on us, getting up and getting going and trusting Jesus. I don't know why Jesus encouraged Peter to try to walk on water. Unless it was to have Peter realize something, that a source of salvation is Jesus. Now, I, um, it could have been also to help Peter realize when the times really get tough, he can trust Jesus. Uh, scientists have, uh, I don't know if I've ever told you this before, scientists have done a study on rats. They put rats in a completely smooth tub of water and just to see how long it would take them to tread water. 17 minutes and they drowned. They did it again, this time, right as 17 minutes approached, they pulled them out of the water. And then they took those same rats that had been saved, they put them back in the water. This time they treaded water 36 hours, three days. The scientists didn't know what to conclude other than they understood that salvation would come. But G Peter had to now understand salvation would come. The real miracle in this book, or in this story, we have the miracle of Jesus walking on water. Well, you know what? Jesus is the Son of God. He can do anything he wants. That would be just as easy as us walking up and down the stairs. Peter attempting to walk on water? Well, I suppose. But I see the real miracle in the story is in that last verse. Jesus got on the boat with Peter and in that calm, the disciples realized something. 
they realized that Jesus was the Christ and they worshiped. I don't know about you, but that's often why I come to church, to have that moment of calm so I can realize that yes, Jesus is the Christ, my source of strength. I believe I get encouraged. Bruce Larson tells the story of um, when he was young, he was swimming in the ocean and it got caught by the current, riptide or something, and it was taking him out in the ocean and he, he swam furiously against the current to try to get back to shore and it just was not happening. So he, he stopped, he was exhausted and he stopped. And he heard a voice and to this day he says that was the voice of God. The voice said, can you tread water? And he thought, yes, I, I think I can. But it was only in that silence that he heard that voice. Can you tread water? And he started to tread water. And as he did, he noticed slowly but surely the waves started to take him back to shore. And his life was saved. From then on, he realized God is his strength. There's a wonderful poem that was written by Edwina Gately that says to much to us, especially in this world where it's hard to have faith. Even sometimes people come to church and they have faith in Christianity, but they don't have a trust in God, a relationship with God. Or they have a code of ethics of Jesus' moral teachings, or God's call for justice, or an ideology of Christianity. Or they might even value just gathering for worship. This text calls us into the calm, into the calm of Jesus' presence and receive something. Elizabeth, Edwina, excuse me, Edwina Gately said it very well. This is her poem. Be silent, be still, alone, empty before your God. Say nothing, ask nothing, be silent, be still. Let your God look upon you. That is all. God knows. God understands. God loves you. God loves you with an enormous love and only wants to look upon you with that love. Quiet, still, be let your God love you. Amen.
Here in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe. Filled by the Spirit of God in Christ Jesus, in praying for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord of all, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. We pray for missionaries across the world. Keep them safe and bless the work they do in your name. Lord, in your mercy. You have given us vast seas, great lands, and abundant natural resources to feed a hungry planet. Give us also grateful hearts and willing hands to care for, those, for these good gifts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be present with those across this earth who are hiding from their enemies and who are afraid they are all alone. We remember especially those suffering from the Ebola virus outbreak in Western Africa, those affected by the horrors of ethnic cleansing ca caused by the Islamic State in Iraq, those affected by increasing tensions between Russia and the United States, European Union, and Australia. And we remember those in the Middle East wars of Israel, Hamas, and Syria. God of grace and God of mercy, be among us. Bring your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we call upon you with belief for our intercession for all who need your healing presence. We remember especially Kimberly Banks, Maria Von Brandt, Alton Burnell, Leo Biella, Shonda Cartwright, Harry Pentris, Bobby Jameson, Vera Kimsey, Jim Lampy. Bernadette L., Willis Meldrin, Willard Murawski, Sarah Nervig, George No, Betty Carlton, April Gebkin, Jack Snyder, Susan Sorensen, Joe Spaghera, Chase T., and Mary Thomas. Are there any others? Calm the storm, families dealing with the death of a loved one. Be with those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Robert Gipner, Sharon Severson, Don Jackson, and Patricia Minert. Fill their aching hearts with your peace and hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to your loving hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
God of mercy and grace, The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy Lord, O God of power, Hosanna in the highest, blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. It's the second Sunday of the month, so we commune via intinction. You will receive a wafer, the bread, in your hand. Hold on to it until the chalice comes by and dip or intinct it into the chalice. It's the second oldest known form of communion in history. I, please... Uh, I was going to say, we love children, don't we? And we do love children. Um, all is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We thank you, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have fed us in a way our hearts can understand with the saving body and blood of Jesus Christ. Enliven us by your presence in this meal, that we may be your presence in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite you to be seated for a moment. Let me just tell you about a couple of things coming up. First off, um, I'm going to be gone for an out-of-town meeting. I'm leaving Monday afternoon and will return sometime Wednesday. But that means the 7 a.m. men's Bible study will not take place. The 11 a.m. Bible study will. That will be led by Hal Christensen. And then the Wednesday morning Christ Care group will not meet this week. Thursday, the Faith and Current Events class will meet. Uh, on September 6th and 7th, that's a weekend, Saturday and Sunday, there's something called um, God's Work, Our Hands. It's the second year that this is being done. And we're going to see a minute and a half uh, video with our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton. I think we will. There we go. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Eaton, and I'm the presiding bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Last fall on God's Work, Our Hands Sunday, members of local congregations came together to work in this community garden on the north side of Chicago. As ELCA members, we do the work of serving our neighbors and making the world a better place every day. We're kind of an undercover force for good. But on God's Work, Our Hands Sunday, we can come out in our yellow-shirted thousands and have the opportunity to do this work together. Whether we plant gardens in urban communities, write letters to veterans and soldiers, or serve meals to people who are food insecure, we dedicate this day each year to be church together, church for the sake of the world. Serving together, we do God's work of restoring and reconciling communities in Jesus' name throughout the world. So join us on Sunday, September 7th for God's Work, Our Hands Sunday, as we witness to the love of God who knows and loves each one of us. Hey, nice shirt. Thanks. Yellow, wear it, share it. All right, what we are planning, if you notice this insert, what we are planning, Cassie Demick is helping do that, by the way. And um, you, you notice the workday is Saturday, September 6th, 9 a.m. till noon. And we hope to do some things in the neighborhood. And you'll see the list of things that will happen. Anyway, enough said. Am I missing any announcements? Please rise and receive the benediction.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship. Well, go in peace. Serve the Lord.